Well, he's still away, David Menzies. He only went away for a week, but apparently tried to get back into the country and they said, no way. I don't know where he is now. I think he's back from Costa Rica, but they did have some serious weather, so who knows? Anyway, with any luck, David will be back next week. Uh, but in his place, well, Marion Mead Ward is still here. I'm still here. Anchoring yeah. the left. Yes. <laughs> is that a, is that Being a... dragged under by the well, left. Sure, is that what pleasant. you really wanted to say? <laughs> I'm not going to... And Adrian Boucher, comment editor of the Toronto Sun. First time on the Rumble, not first time on the show. No, first time on the Rumble, though. You ready for this? I'm ready. It gets pretty I'm heated. I'm ready to rumble. At least David isn't here. You end up We're killing him. We're going to have a girl him. fight Probably. Later. <laughs> don't, I, I, I have... don't get me all excited. <laughs> it's a Friday and I'm 53. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Um, what I just spoke about in the monologue was um, Dean Del Mastro, who's a Tory MP for Peterborough. He's a nice fella. I, I know him. I, I like him, but he, he wants to bring in more censorship so that when, you, when some idiot says on a comment board, for example, at the bottom of the sun columns, I mean, you should see mine everywhere, you know, he should die slowly, right. that we have to identify them. They should be allowed to say these things. If they, if they directly threaten your life, that's a different issue. Mm -hmm. But let's be, begin with you, Adrian. Mm -hmm. The idea that everyone who leaves a comment or tweets or uh, should, should be identified and the state should have the power to identify that person? Well, it, I think it's this issue regarding this young woman that committed suicide, sure. of course, in BC. That, that sort of started a lot of this discussion. But the notion of um, the surveillance in the cyber world has has been around for the past five years. It's getting a lot of notoriety now because yeah. of some tragedies that have happened. So I, I'll speak to a little bit about what we do at the paper. Yeah. It's, it's next to impossible to monitor um, every single thing that people say on the comment boards. We do our best, mm -hmm. but we leave it up to each other. Like our, our readers, if you have an issue with a comment, you flag it. Yeah. And then we will look at it mm -hmm. and we'll take it down or whatever. I mean, if it, it does get problematic, of course, when there are death threats and it has happened. It's happened to some of our columnists. Yeah. It's happened to my previous boss when I used to work for the mayor. got death threats all the time. Surprise. Yeah, mayor, I mean, big mayor, shock. Mayor Toronto got yeah. death threats. I know. I no idea, Adrian. Imagine. So I, I, I do understand where the uh, MP's no, um, heart is in the right place. I get all of that. But I do get a bit concerned when yeah. there is going to be state intervention about some of the things that and are he's to an be MP. said. I mean, he, he was, I think he was Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister, yes. if not now. A, a teenage girl being bullied, that, that's a different issue from what he said were hateful comments. Well, yeah. yes, in the public eye, mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a privilege and a profile and we get hateful comments, but that's we're right. not little babies. We don't have to run away to mummy the whole time. Well, and then, of course, the other guy that made those absolutely idiotic comments and lost his job, too. Yeah. So there's, there's becoming mm -hmm. a very big... Uh, sort of, you know, people are getting so socially sensitive to a yeah. lot of this. And, and as far as the bullying, I mean, that's what needs to be addressed. Exactly, and that's bullying. That, that's that'll bullying. be in any yeah. context. Mar that was that was very sensible. Are you going to be so sensible? Well, I, I don't know. I think there is a role for uh, monitoring and removing. I think it. I think there is some self uh, self censorship or. You know, there's the wisdom of crowds, if you will. I've seen people put uh, some pretty crazy things. Well, no, th but there are some people that put some crazy things up on my Facebook page, and then my supporters or other more reasonable people will correct that. Mm -hmm. So there is, uh, and that is happening, which is great. So people engage are engaging each other in a dialogue. But I do think that if somebody is uh, making a death threat or if somebody is counseling a violence against someone else I, I think the censors internally in the paper or wherever that's being okay. posted should but not before let that, that stage, on the... I mean, that, that, that's that's a, a definite area for discussion but if someone says I hate him he's he, he's vile he's I just nasty stuff I mean no, I, I that, get this... that's not I, to say well, that's what he's saying somebody. Del Mastro is saying hateful comments somehow we, we they so should always have to identify we, themselves how have we defined hateful comments? yeah and I do believe that it's a whole lot easier to make a comment anonymously and I think that I'd have I'd have more time for a discussion where everybody that has a message board says there's no anonymous comments here so if you're gonna say something and you believe in it then put your name behind you it we have to you make up a name well there's ways Letters around to the that. editor, believe me. I mean, and Adrian knows well, this. Well, that's why they get. A lot of them, they make up names. They make up names. And, and it's also, I, I know we're sort of delving into the area of, of media and print and, and the like, but there's also um, many in the police service are now recognizing that they need to look and surveil and, and look into the cyber aspect of what's going on. A lot of this is such new media, Twitter, mm. Facebook, all of these things. I, I'm just loath to believe in my heart that the government has to come in and regulate well, that. That, that, that really uh, troubles me because yeah. a lot of the time, a lot of the time, in, in and I'll again speak specifically about the paper, 
we do want to leave the comment boards open for there to be free-flowing discussion so we can have the freedom of speech. But to be sure, if there are troubling notes and messages being left, we will remove them. We well, will. And, that's and, the thing. Uh, and people can block people from their Facebook account or block them the from their same Twitter rules account. Have Twitter to all the apply. time. I, I've probably yeah. blocked 100 people from Twitter. I mean, they, they... Well, and I've unfriended people. But I think the same rules that apply. So we have rules around hate speech. We have rules around libel and slander. Like those laws currently exist. So for me, applying those to this medium is the appropriate approach because. You know, it doesn't matter where you say it, whether you use the telephone or whether you say it in person or whether you tweet it. It's just another medium to say something, and we have rules that govern that, so why not use them there? I don't think that just because it's a new medium, nothing should apply. Woman, um, next door neighbor playing basketball, and she gets tired of, and it is noisy. I mean, the boom, the boom, the boom. The boy gets bigger, it's more and more noisy. Uh, yeah. Where was this? Was which part of the country was there? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm looking at the commercial yeah. break, but anyway, she, she now says it's her environmental right, yes. her environmental right Very to not creative. be disturbed by a kid with a basketball. The thing Very is, creative. I can see both points of view here because yeah. if you do, ha if he's playing a lot, then it really will be annoying. At the same time, environmental rights and environmental protection for a neighbour? No. Absolutely not. Really? Well, Sensible. It's, I'm no, surprised. It's, there are noise bylaws, and uh, if it's if it's loud enough that it's violating a noise bylaw, uh, and that's usually a decibel level, but well, I don't see. That. It wouldn't be. A no, of level. course it wouldn't be. But it, it's a regular beating of a ball on the floor, and it's going to be annoying. But wouldn't we? Wouldn't we? Ra so turn up the bass on your dance music. <laughs> She's a writer, something. apparently. Put on some headphones or, or go to an internet cafe or whatever. There's ways of dealing Leave with this. Leave your house because the neighbor is playing basketball. If it has come to the point where it's that annoying, wouldn't she rather have this boy playing basketball than doing what? video games? I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's the issue, though. Well, that is I an think issue. I think being in again. But no, that is an issue. Compromise is the issue. Want... Neighbours compromise. There will always be some noise that disturbs, but there's not too much yeah, of it. So are we going to have a, a state where, uh, you know, you can only play basketball for a half hour at a time because other than that, it, it disturbs and it forget it. Okay. Well, here's where this this woman's argument falls apart for me. One of the things that came out of this was that she had put up a board to sort of block out the sound. Mm -hmm. Then she made a complaint that it's impeding her light. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. then she was saying it's it's happening in the evening and so it's noise. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which it is. So so it falls apart a little bit for me. I do believe that we as neighbors have a responsibility to one another to uh, respect one another. But for her to use this type of, of mechanism, the, uh, the environmental nonsense, and I'm sure she's going to go make a human rights complaint at some point. The other thing that this woman also said was that there are, and, and this is where I think it's sort of legitimate, so I do look at both sides of this. She would indicated that in this particular area where yeah. she resides, there are three basketball, basketball courts very that are very by, close says. proximity. Yeah. Yeah. So this young man, who apparently has quite a talent for basketball, who knows, he might be an NBA star one day, and, but uh, he's, he's got a talent, and so he practices as often as he gets the opportunity to. God love yeah, him. absolutely, and I think to your point that this is a kid that wants to exercise. I mean, mm -hmm. we're constantly talking about children mm -hmm. being overweight. We just had the Ontario Medical Association say they want to tax junk food. This kid is going yeah. out there and, and exercising and doing well, something. So I, I think that there's a far better way, perhaps, for this, these yeah, families to work this Apparently, most of the neighbors out. side with the kid playing basketball. Of course so at they this would. point, she has to move. She simply has to find somewhere else yeah. to live. And she can go there and curse them. She can write nasty comments on yeah, Twitter and Facebook she if she likes. She's yeah. still allowed to, but I think she yeah. just has to. I don't know. Maybe everyone's being unreasonable here, but either way, um, thank God. I play sensible things like cricket and rugby and soccer. Back in a few moments <laughs> with lots more stuff. Don't go away. Don't move. Whatever you do. I've got no idea what a strip club is, but apparently it's a place where men go to see women take their clothes off. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is. Forgive me if you're offended. If you're offended by this language, I don't particularly care. But there's a new Toronto bylaw. You know, strip clubs are not places where clergy go to discuss matters of profound theology. Guys go there to see women who often are hookers too. I mean, yeah, oh no, they're not. Yes, they often are, for goodness sake. And they're taking their clothes off, so things go on, and you go there, you make your own decision. But now, the Tr Toronto Council has passed a bylaw. Um, there should be no physical contact with, and I quote, uncovered breasts, buttocks, genital, pubic, anal, and perineal areas. I don't even know what that means. Of a patron or any other person, but they are allowed to shake hands. So if... <laughs> Marion. Oh, oh that was a real turn on. <laughs> Marion, I, I... 
for some people it might be. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, everything about this is sordid, but that's what yeah. they are. To say that, I mean, there, there are many, there are some women who strip who say, I don't want to be touched, mm. but there are other women who strip who will say to guys, for a bit more money, we can have greater contact. So mm. they're going to be irritated at this. And for the, the Toronto City Council, which should be dealing with catching dogs, and of course, Councillor Christine Wong Tam. Uh, insisted that gay entertainers are also consulted when all this goes through, but I think that's vital. Well, I think I think there is merit for a law for this, and it's really? partly to protect the women. A lot of these women are uh, the way they get into it. Yeah. We've read the stories; some of them have been uh, forced into it through human trafficking. Uh, some of them have fallen into it through addiction. Some of them choose it because I've heard that it can be rather lucrative, mm -hmm. but. I do believe that there, if, if we're going as a society to allow this activity to occur, we've yeah. got to put some parameters around it. And when you allow that sort of touching, it can, uh, it can really cause some problems, mostly for the, the women. The women uh, tend to be pretty worldly characters. They have men who protect them. If they want to be touched, which means you will give money, then they'll be touched. And if someone touches them without permission, believe me, that guy will okay, be dealt so with. Okay, so then this is that, redundant. Is, that is part of a contractual uh, it's, part negoti of it's part of a contractual negotiation. This is trying to stop the gropers and the people saying, because you're naked, I have a right to touch you. And you think okay. about the message that that sends. But Adrian, uh, a, 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 a woman who's wrong. stripping is not... The redundancy. Yeah, I mean, she's going to give the guy a slap so quick, he won't sure. know where he is. Yes, these are very strong women. They um, And I do agree with the notion, though, that a lot of the folks, the, the women that shoot, that go into this type of business are not necessarily always there on their own volition. Okay. They don't necessarily choose that. I understand that. But as far as the City of Toronto's Municipal Licensing and Standard Committee about two months ago had a demonstration brought in to oh, the council this. meeting. And I wrote a column about it. And I just thought to myself, my God, are we really at that point at City Council where we have to have a stripper poll in, uh, uh, it was Dude, erected. It was, it was erected, erected was it? at City Who Council. Who erected it, Aiden? <laughs> I know. I've heard How did you like? Well, you know, I'm, I know I'm here for in place of David Menzies, so I figured, I, figured, I, figured, I, should little, around here, yeah. I figured I should say something a little over the top, but nonetheless. Yeah. So they put the poll up. A young lady and some lovely, you know, patent leather shorts did a, did yeah. a display for the councillors, and they explained in great detail why the wearing patent was important for the friction of the poll and. And yes. all this, and so, so the the, the notion were, were of going to ban patent well, was I, it was, next? It was I would to, die if I could stop that. <laughs> it was to yeah. display, of course, you know what these women do, what their job, their performance, their yeah. entertainers. Their the councillors weren't aware of this. Right? No, uh, apparently not. Apparently not. So um, that was yeah. the the busiest room in city hall I that day. I can tell you. But anyway, as far as this goes, I do look at it as a, as a bit redundant. I mean, there yeah. is there is a need to, of course, ensure that women are protected of when course. they are in this type of situation. But ugh, look, right. I've been to a strip club. I've seen some of these women. Some of these women. You're absolutely right. They are the first person to clock a guy if there's something. So untoward. speaking of applied stupidity, uh, <laughs> Leaves Center Tyler Bozak wearing blackface as part of a Halloween costume, and he tweets this. Now, he says he was Michael Jackson, and but he put at the bottom, if you're offended by this, if you think this is, then you're an idiot. It is offensive. Now I'm not one of these people who are offended by everything. I hate that idea, but. It, <laughs> When I was a kid growing up in England, we had something called the black and white minstrel show, where white performers were put on blackface. Now, you look at this today and you cringe. We simply move on. We grow up. It's wrong. You have to be an idiot to do it. He's an idiot. He shouldn't have done it. Well, this is a costume. I mean, the blackface itself is, uh, is very offensive. But if he's dressing up as Michael Jackson and he's a white guy or if he's... You Michael know, Jackson was white, wasn't he? <laughs> well, At the end? At eventually, the end he was, yes. Eventually he was, yeah. So he's certainly pushing the boundaries of taste, but he knows that. I mean, to put a footnote on his own account saying, if you're offended, well, he knows that people are going to be offended You can offend people in all that. sorts of ways, but it's... Look, we never had the situation where black people dressed as white people. One group had power, one group didn't. I, and it's one of these marvelous uh, progresses where the government didn't say you cannot. People just realized you should not. And, and mm. he goes against that. I don't think he should. I, I, I don't, you and I know we can't regulate stupidity. This is just one of those sorts of situations. Yeah. I, I, I'm not too particularly fussed about this. I, I do think that he made some dumb decisions. It's not dissimilar to the to the baseball player that put the the notes in his eye black. I, there's well, people make dumb well. decisions all the time. Mm. Um, I 
I think that in this particular case, if he truly was trying to, he said after the fact when it was pulled down off of mm. his Facebook page that he was just trying to show off his hero. And he really uh, admired Michael Jackson. His hero is Michael Jackson. Yeah. The leaves are so I mean, that's, bloody a, awful. that's a whole other <laughs> level of psychoanalysis that is needed yeah. for that individual. I mean, as far as the music, mm. maybe. But I don't know. I, I try not to get super fussed about this. What, what troubles me is, do you remember back in, um, I think it was five or six years ago, when young Prince Harry dressed up in a Nazi uniform? Yeah. Yes. Those are the sorts of things that I find to be far more Very offensive offensive. and far more, uh, you know, unacceptable than someone putting I on I suppose in a way, I mean, he, his character is rather a narky. He does dumb things. Yeah. That's totally against his character. I mean, sure. his beliefs aren't that at all. The funniest thing I thought was a letter to the Times that said, Dear Sir, that was not a Nazi uniform. The, the Open Stomp Führer's badge was upside down. <laughs> anyway, yeah. just for, before we go, who's going to win on, uh, on Tuesday? Who's going to win? Barack Obama. I hope Mitt Romney. Mm, qualified. <laughs> Ladies, marvellous. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.